Welcome to this brief tutorial on how to complete proper in-text or parenthetical citations according to MLA format. So your first question may be, what is MLA format? Well, MLA format is a documentation style that has been widely used by schools and academic departments for over half a century. It really provides rules and guidelines for us as writers to learn how to properly cite our sources in an appropriate way. So why do we use MLA format in our English class? Well, one reason why we use MLA format is it helps us to easily cross-reference our sources. This means we can clearly see the sources cited in your paper and how those correspond with the information you provide on your work cited page. MLA format also provides a consistent format within a discipline. You'll know exactly what's expected of you as the writer in how to document, and me as the reader will clearly understand how you're citing your sources. Also, MLA format gives you credibility as a writer, because as mentioned before, this format style has been around for almost half a century. And finally, one of the most important things is using MLA format protects yourself against plagiarism. Remember, if you don't cite your sources, both in text and on the Works Cited page, you're in danger of plagiarizing information from other sources. So it is essential that we're all on the same page and use MLA format for your essays in your English class. So where can you find the rules for LA format? There are several different resources available to you. One is the OWL English Purdue website. This is an excellent website that contains a complete list of instructions on how to cite any type of source according to MLA guidelines. We will go over some of the basic citations in this tutorial today, but you'll find that as you complete research, oftentimes you'll find unique sources that may have unique ways to cite that information. The Al Purdue website, again, is a complete list of all of the different types of citations you may run into when writing your paper. Another resource that will be helpful to you will be the MLA Works Cited Rules Handbook posted in the doc sharing area of your course. This is a Word document that contains a comprehensive list of how to cite your sources according to MLA guidelines. Feel free to print this off and bring it with you or to use it simply by opening a Word document and then opening the file from doc sharing. Now that we've talked about what MLA citation or format is and where you can find it, let's talk specifically about the two parts that MLA citation requires. As noted before, MLA citation requires you to complete a work cited page and it requires you to complete in-text citations, also called parenthetical citations, actually within your paper. We'll talk about the Works Cited page in another tutorial. For this tutorial, we're going to primarily focus on in-text citations. So when do you need to use an in-text or parenthetical citation? Well, there's three general areas you'll always need to use a parenthetical citation for. The first one is anytime you're quoting information. Remember, quoting means to repeat another person's words word for word using quotation marks. So anytime you use a direct quote from one of your sources, you will need to cite the information of where you got that source. So for instance, in the example below, we see a direct quote where they've put quotes around it, and then we see that the author has noted where this quote came from. It came from the author Bloomberg and the page number it came from. We'll talk about how to include the author, the information, and page number in detail later in this tutorial. Just note for now, if you use direct quotes, you must tell your reader where that information came from. In addition to using in-text citations for direct quotes, you also need to make sure that you use in-text citations anytime you summarize facts or ideas from a source. Remember, summarizing means to take ideas from a long passage and really condense them down. So 
when you summarize, look at an example on your screen in front of you. We see the original passage on the left. Notice how long it is. Our summary passage is much shorter. This author has condensed and taken out just the essential information from the original passage and included just a couple facts in the summary. Even if you summarize information, you have to say where that information came from. That's where the in-text citation comes from. Notice that they've noted the author and the page number where this information came from. So anytime you summarize a source, you still have to include in-text citation. Finally, the last type of in-text citation that you always have to use is anytime you paraphrase a source. Again, paraphrasing means to use the ideas from another source, but you change and use your own words. This is one of the most common areas of plagiarism. Oftentimes, students or writers think, hey, if I change the words and use my own wording, then I don't need to cite the source. That is absolutely incorrect. Anytime you use information from somewhere else and it's someone else's ideas, even if you put it in your own words, you must cite that source. Look at the example here. We have our original passage and then we have our correct paraphrasing on the side. They have put it into their own words. They're not using a direct quote, but the information is still someone else's idea. Someone else still originally came up with this thought and conveyed it in writing already. So with that, they need to make sure that they cite where that information came from. And you can see at the bottom of this paraphrased paragraph, we see that the author has cited where the information came from, the article Annie Oakley. So again, remember, anytime you're directly quoting an author, you need to use an in-text citation. Anytime you're summarizing a passage or condensing it down, you need to use an in-text citation. And anytime you're paraphrasing information from a passage, that means putting it into your own words, you must cite that source. So now that we've talked about when you need to cite your sources in using in-text citation. Let's talk a little bit about how to do this. So general guidelines for citing your in-text sources depend greatly upon the source medium or the type of source it is. Is it a print source? Is it an internet site? Is it film? And then secondly, it depends upon the sources entry on the Works Cited page. Because remember, all of your in-text citations should always directly correlate to the information you've provided on the Works Cited page. Any source information that you provide in the in-text must correspond to the source information on the Works Cited page. Let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. Notice the example here on the top, we have a paragraph from an essay. Notice that the author here has used a direct quote and so has included the citation information at the end, which is the author's last name from this article. The author's last name directly corresponds to what appears on the Works Cited page at the end of her essay. We notice that this entry begins with the author's last name. This allows us to easily cross-reference. If I want to know more about this source or more about this quote, I can easily go to the Works Cited page, locate the author's last name, and learn more about it. That's the purpose of in-text and Works Cited page, for your reader to easily see where your information came from and if they want to learn more about that source. There are some basic rules for when you citing information when you have all of the information present. The most common type of credit or citation will always list the author's last name and the page number in parentheses at the end of the sentence. So notice in our example here, again, we have a direct quote, and then we see that the citation showing where that information comes from always comes at the end of the sentence. We begin the citation by using parentheses, 
we list the author's last name followed by the page number that that information or quote was located on. Notice here that we don't use the word page, we don't use the abbrevi abbreviation PG, we simply list the author's last name and the page number. Also notice that the period always comes on outside of the parentheses. This indicates the end of the sentence. So for any type of basic citation, especially print sources, where you know the author's last name and you know where you got the quote or paraphrasing or summarizing information from, you'll always include the author's last name and the page number. Another way to cite general information is to introduce your author in the actual sentence. If you're introducing the author or using this signal word in the actual sentence, then all you need to include at the end of the sentence is the page number because you've already told your audience who the author is. So notice in the example here, in Hurricane Force, Michael Miles, that's our author, explains that cool air draws down heat and moisture from warm bodies of water to form a storm. So again, we have the author introduced in the sentence, so that means all we need to do is include parentheses with the page number at the end of the sentence. Don't forget to include that period on the outside of the parentheses. Again, notice we never include the word page or the abbreviation PG when referencing any page numbers in an in-text citation. Now you may be asking yourself, this is great information if you have an author and a page number, but what do you do when you don't necessarily have those two things? Or maybe you have an anonymous article or an anonymous book that doesn't have an author. Let's discuss how to cite those sources, first of all, when there's no author listed. When there's no author listed, and this happens often for internet resources, and even sometimes for magazine articles or scholarly journals, sometimes those are anonymous. So in that case, you will use an abbreviated title of the article, and then if the page number is available, include the page number. So here, instead of the author's last name, since there's no author, we've included the title of the article that the information came from. Notice we still begin our entry with our parentheses, followed by quotation marks around the title of our article. Then we list the page number, and then we have the period on the outside of the parentheses. So that's how you would do an in-text citation if you have the title of the article and a page number. Some sources you will find do not use page numbers. This is fairly often, again, for any type of internet source or even sometimes magazine articles that have been posted online. In this case, you're going to use just the author if the author's name is available. Notice in the example here, only the author's name was available and no page numbers. So we've used our parentheses, we've included the author's last name, and we've ended it with a period on the outside of the parentheses. Remember, you can also introduce the author in the sentence if you would like as well. Sometimes a source doesn't list the author or the page number. In this case, you'll use simply an abbreviated portion of the title. So notice in our example down here, again, we still use our parentheses. We use an abbreviated version of the title of our article, big win, and we use quotation marks around it, followed by the period on the outside of the parentheses. This would be a basic citation for an article that is anonymous and does not have an author and also does not have page numbers. Remember, you can also introduce the title of these articles in the sentence if you prefer to do that as well. These are really the basic overview of in-text citations. As mentioned before, you're going to come across sources that may not necessarily fall into any one of the categories we've discussed today. In that case, you'll need to make sure that you're using some of the other resources provided. If you run into an issue with a source where you're just not quite sure how to cite it, check out the Owl Purdue website. 
It contains, again, a comprehensive list of how to cite any type of source you may run into. Also, don't forget about that MLA Works Cited Rules Handbook that I have posted in Doc Sharing. Both of these resources will help you figure out how to cite any type of source you may be using in your essay for your English class. Couple tips to remember, always use MLA formatting, which is what we've gone over today. And make sure you have in-text citations for every single direct quote, every single paraphrase, and every single time you summarize information from another source. Make sure the information that appears on your Works Cited page correlates with the information you include in your Works Cited page. If you follow these simple tips to remember and the information presented in this tutorial, you won't have a problem properly citing all of your